I cannot believe that I'm doing this. Hi, everybody. This is Leanne Lord. I am doing, I think this is my second ever um, live video, and I am doing it by request. Uh, I mentioned earlier that my, my comedy show had been canceled. Yay. And... Mm -hmm. And a couple of you in, on various mediums, both uh, Instagram and Twitter and here on Facebook, said, hey, why don't you just do something live and we'll PayPal you. So yeah, I'm here for the money. Leanne Lord at PayPal. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, telling jokes here seems weird. So I'm just gonna, I don't know, hang out for a little bit. I, I was supposed to be at the comic strip tonight and you know, uh, the NBA canceled their show, their 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 games. Broadway canceled their shows, and then I guess the comic strip was like, yeah, okay, I guess we'll close. Um, although I think the years of, I don't know, comics being uninsured, being unhealthy, being unhealthy in that space pretty much inoculated all of us, but the audience doesn't know that. So maybe they're not sure now. Hey, Ralph, you're watching. That's cool. Thank you. Um, I'll wave. <laughs> uh, Adama, Eno, and Mary Kay Fleming. Hi, you guys. Thanks for watching. I don't know what you're watching. This is just really me um, in my uh, very modest home office wondering when my cat is going to show up because he does that. And, you know, I said I, you know, my, that the club had called me to cancel the show after I had gotten dressed and put on my makeup and, you know, was feeling kind of cute. But this lighting is not making me feel cute at all. <laughs> this is feeling really harsh and not great. I mean, my cheeks, my forehead, it's like, what? I need a lighting designer in here to make me look as cute as I feel. Uh, which I'm not, Mark. Thank you. I see you there too. Um, I don't have anything to talk about. I'm, I'm just responding to requests. Uh, hey, Jeff. Good evening to you too. I'm just responding to requests. You know, since I didn't have a show and I didn't have anything to do, um, uh, which is not true. I have plenty to do. I have not done my taxes. <laughs> my accountant is patiently waiting for my my non numbers. Um, so I'm going to do that at some point, but perhaps not tonight because I didn't plan for it tonight. So I don't, I'm not in that mindset of trying to get my numbers in. Uh, they're not impressive at all. What I'm really hoping is that, uh, CNN will eventually say that, yes, yes, we're pushing back the, the April 15th deadline. That's how I'll know how this pandemic is serious. If they say, yeah, y'all April 15th, psh, don't worry about it. You good. That would be so awesome. Hey, Sora, Tracy, I see you. Uh, Joseph, I see you too. This is wild. I've never done this. Not really. Um, but I'm, I guess I'm digging it. The, the opportunity to ramble for no reason. It's almost like being in a relationship, <sighs> which I'm not, which is a whole other story. <laughs> Thank you for the hand clap. I appreciate that. Yeah, dating is no joke. Hey, Joseph. Um, uh, yeah, uh, well, I've gotten a lot of jokes out of it. What I haven't gotten is uh, any dates in any relationships. I think I, I told this story when I was on Sirius on Tuesday. And if you're like me, and you don't have Sirius. I didn't even hear me tell this joke. And it wasn't even a joke. It was just this one guy who approached me and wanted, he gave me a compliment, which is nice. It's always great to open with a compliment. Uh, but he lives, according to his profile on OkCupid, he lives in Montreal. And I said, thank you for the compliment. Montreal was a bit outside of my uh, zone of operation. And while uh, I appreciate your, your kind words, this is not viable and I'm trying to do viable here. And he's like, no, 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 I live in New York, but I'm a sergeant in the army and I'm stationed on a peacekeeping mission. First of all, Americans don't do no peacekeeping. So why number one? Uh, but he's like, yeah, I'll be coming home to New York in a few months. And I, I had to decline his offer to get to know him. Hey, Damien, hey, Vince, hey, John. Um, I declined his offer to, to meet and uh, <laughs> get 
to know each other because you cannot be a sergeant in the army and not know how to spell sergeant. I'm just saying. Tracy, I hear you. At this point, my zone is earth. Girl, ugh, can we talk? This was not going to be a show about dating or I didn't even get on to talk about dating. I just got on to, to do this at my request. But hey, Jamie, how you doing? Oh, Jamie, hey, dude, you sent me a video or something in my messages and I did not forget you. I just not have not gotten to it. Hey, Lou Clyde. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jeff. Hey, Joseph again. You're laughing. I don't know what I said that made you LOL, but I appreciate it. Valencia! Hey, how you doing, girl? I, I, I Supposedly, I was going to see you at Dragon Con, but the way things are going, I don't know. Hey, Brian. Nice to see you, too. But yeah, I think you would, th you would think if somebody's going to run game, at least on me, you know, I think spelling counts. And if you can't spell the name of your job, um, we don't have a future. I'm just saying, and Brian, you made me remember this. One of the other guys I met on OkCupid, um, I knew he wasn't legit because he spelled his name wrong. And what I mean is, he, first it was Brian, then it was Brian, Brian with an I and Brian with a Y. And every Brian I have ever met in life is real clear on how they spell their name. Right. They're like they would. That's like their whole thing. That's their whole that's built into their personality. That's built into their their introduction. They'll go. Hi, my name is Brian with an I. Just so you know, and you don't screw up and say Brian with a Y, you know, because that would get you banished to some realm uh, of punishment. So I've never known a Brian to spell his name or be confused about how his name is spelled. So again, an indicator for me that this gentleman was trying to run game. Listen, I don't have a problem with running game. Quiet as this cat. You know, but if you're going to run game, really run it, son. Be correct. Be, have your profile picture not be blurry. You know, spell shit correctly. Act like you went to school and paid attention. You know, if you not, then I'm not your girl. Okay? <laughs> Brian, right? No, Brian ever misspells their own name. And Brian with an I is only the right way. And I will, I will tell you, I have met Brians who spell it wrong with a Y. <laughs> and they will tell you that is the right way. Like, this is the line in the sand. This is the Jean-Luc Picard moment. Here and no further. Hey, Gil, how you doing? Lou, I'm glad I'm cracking you up. Hey, Sora Manera, I see you. I see you too, girl. I meant to message you. I'm not sure if I did. Just to check on you and see how you're doing because we have been going through some grown-up stuff. Have we not? I'm not I gotta say, I'm not digging adulthood. And this this pandemic is not helping with my, I don't know, my view of adulthood. Like, why couldn't this have happened when I was younger and didn't care? <laughs> it wasn't in the risk group. But every news report I hear, the, 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 um, the, the group at risk keeps getting bigger and bigger. Don't be poor. <laughs> don't be brown. <laughs> Yes, Lois, girl, you, well, you and I have talked about this. You, adulthood definitely sucks. Um, I wish adulthood was like gender. Uh, no disrespect to gender folks. Um, but I wish I could identify as not adult or not being an adult because I'm really, I'm not digging this experience. And I think my, my better years were younger. I hate to say that. I hate to be ageist. Um, hey, Eric, I see you. Thank you. You waved. I appreciate that. Um, uh, Jamie, thank you for LOLing. If I can make you LOL, then I know I'm doing good. I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe you're laughing at me and not with me. Like, look at this chick trying to finally do live on Facebook, which everybody been doing for 20 years, and now she just new to the game. <laughs> Hey, Craig, thank you for thinking I'm awesome. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You and my cat, you are, you are the two folks that think, um... I'm awesome. Jamie, my knees hurt just thinking about adulthood. Okay, can I please tell you, my knees started to creak a little bit. And I went to my doctor, you know, I was like, what can I do? And my doctor was like, okay, take, um, oh, it's like a chondroitin. It's like um, some kind of joint medication. And I said, it's like, it's over the counter, totally over the counter. And I said, how long do I take this? She goes, how long do you not want your knees to hurt? I'm like, oh, damn, it's like that. 
And so here's the problem. Now I don't hear my knees creak. Um, but now I'm not sure if that's because they're not creaking or my knees or, or my hearing is going. You hang out with old folks and you know, you notice all kinds of shit that's wrong. It's going to be wrong and ain't ever going to be right. Um, <laughs> just my knees sigh. No. Hey, Lorna, my sorrow. How you doing? But he said, I love that. Well, okay. Oh, okay, can I just tell you like a week ago, I was tethered to my couch with an old-fashioned plug-in heating pad because out of nowhere my lower back hurt for no reason okay I didn't lift nothing I didn't carry nothing I didn't have any extracurricular activities that might have thrown my back out in a pleasurable way no no that didn't happen just I woke up ow <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck right so I didn't have I used to have a, a, a big stash of uh, hey Chewy I see you I used to have a stash hey Delsa thank you thank you for saying I look great thank you for lying girl this light is not very flattering John oh my god John I gotta talk to you um, but yeah I woke up my back hurt and I thought I had this stash I used to have this stash of Thermacare heating pads because I used to do martial arts and I was I got hurt all the time and I needed heat well, that was a long time ago in a gym far, far away. So I had no Thermacare heating pads. And I said, I'm like my parents. I don't throw anything away. And I dug around for a little bit and I found my heating pad, a plug-in heating pad. I felt like my grandma, yo. I went and put on a house dress. <laughs> I put on a house dress, made myself a cup of tea and plugged in this old ass heating pad. And let me tell you, it did the job. I mean, I was tethered for like two days, but it felt, I just, it felt really comforting to actually have that. I felt like I was, you know, getting back to an analog solution to a digital problem. I was like, Ooh, old folks know how to do it. Oh shit. I'm old folks now. Um, oh, thank you for saying I look amazing. Bye Brian. Thank you for hanging out. Hey, Mike Worthington. Um, yeah, no, John, um, you just because you're, you, uh, we had such a great conversation. Ladies and gentlemen on this live stream, I'm really shocked is a very funny, wonderful comedian, John Poveromo. Uh, we were both yes on, uh, the regular Tuesday appearance that I do on Sirius XM on John Fugel saying show, tell me everything. And after the show was where it really went down. Like John and I were talking for like, I don't know what an hour, two hours. We were geeking out about, um, design and, and, and promo and whatnot. And I've designed all these flyers for shows that I am not doing. <laughs> what the hell? And I, John, I was going to message you specifically to ask about uh, what app you recommend for doing dropouts like when you clean out the background because I can do it on my laptop but not that great on my phone Mindy hey Mindy thanks for watching Lawrence Ballard oh my gosh everybody um shout out to uh, Lawrence and Lawrence I'm so sorry I don't remember the name of your show but he is a phenomenal actor he is on a show that's on something great <laughs> And I, I, I say that because we years ago, we did a commercial together for ESPN. And I think I found that clip. I'm going to uh, post it at some point of the commercial we did years ago for ESPN. But there's no more sports. So, yeah, commercials about ESPN and sports may not be the best thing. Um, but I am so doing. I'm so it's OK. His show was on ABC. I am. Ooh, I am so so proud I'm, I'm one of those people that I vacillate between being um, life-threateningly jealous of people who are doing well because it's like what what's going on with me and on the other side I truly am happy for people that I know that have been in this game for a minute and their hustle is real and their talent is real and their grind is real and you can't help be proud help but be proud because you know how sick you uh, cyclical how cyclical this business is and okay there we go um, shameless plug warning okay my girl Lois is on hey Missy I see you too um, we have a show on uh, Monday at uh, it's at the Brooklyn Moon Cafe uh, the Blacklight Comedy Show although I, I am nervous you know pandemic you know telling jokes in a closed environment I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. You know, my healthcare plan ain't all that great. 
and I'm in a, I'm in three risk categories. Uh, I'm brown. I'm a woman, and I'm not 20. Rain, Rain Pryor's watching. Oh my God! Hey girl, Ayana Duki, is it my birthday? Am I gonna die? Is that why y'all are watching? Cause y'all think I'm gonna die? Like I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna. <laughs> and I'm going to be gone. Oh my God, I should have live streamed earlier. For those of you who are tuning in, I'm talking about nothing. I'm doing this upon the recommendation of folks who are like, oh yeah, your show is canceled. You should do a live stream. So here I am. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, Nelsa, thank you for being happy for me. And um, I appreciate that. I don't know exactly what you're happy about. <laughs> okay, I see. I see now. I keep you inspired with your dreams and I'm so sorry. Um... I don't know if I should be doing that. Um, oh, Mike Worthington, how dare you say you wish you could see me perform live? Dude, we did so many shows together with Seymour Swan at the Old New York Comedy Club. Uh, is it the Old New York Comedy Club? Well, I guess it's the new or the middle New York Comedy Club. The way things are going, I'm a little out of the loop, but we had a lot of great uh, weekend shows there. Thank you for hosting. Thank you for being so kind to me. Um, what? What did you say, right? What? I need to live stream all the time? Really? I'm not talking about nothing, girl. I'm not. This is ridiculous. Y'all are cutting in between me and my valuable cat time. I don't know where he is. He's probably sleeping. And I could, again, I could be watching Star Trek DS9, you know, just, just mm, on my boy Avery Brooks, like pretending that's a real possibility because that's all I have now is my hopes and dreams. Um, Thank you. Now, so I'm glad you see my Facebook posts all the time. You have not deleted me or hidden me or, or shoved me away. I will say I do try to be entertaining and entertaining and informative, enlightening and entertaining uh, on Facebook. I just try to, you know, give you, you know, who I am and what I'm thinking. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Ayana, you think my hair looks girl? If you think my hair looks nice, then I must be killing it. Holy shit. I'm a die. I'm a die. I'm getting compliments. Oh my word! Thank you. See, I see. I got. I, I got it all ready to go out and go on stage, and that's why I'm trying to. I was a little disappointed. I'm like, so strangers ain't gonna see this. Strangers ain't gonna see what I the effort I put in. So here I am getting praise from uh, folks who aren't strangers. Eugenia, hey, agreed. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, what? <laughs> no, it's okay. No, so, um, I, my hope is that I will have other shows you know it's it makes sense that shows are canceled right now um because of the pandemic you know nobody wants to you know risk death for a laugh I, that don't make no damn sense i just couldn't believe the comedy club didn't cancel sooner they actually called me they called me at one o'clock to say hey we're doing a show and i'm like you are that's that's great i'll, I'll be there because i didn't have the stones to say no and that's what's weird about comedy. Hey, Jacqueline, I see you. Hey, hey, Yolanda, I see you too. Um, Mirabeth, I see you. Hi, girl. Thank you. Here's what's weird about comedy, you know, or when you work in any sort of insecure environment. Um, I had not worked at the comic strip for a really long time. You know, I went from being, a, I went from being my home club to being a semi-regular to being booked once a month to I would get the email for veils and I didn't know why I was getting it because I put in a veils and I wasn't getting anything. Um, I got a gig. I got booked there back in January and I was like, is it my birthday? What happened? Um, but I had a talk with the manager there. I walked in and the manager was like, he had been managing there for 10 months and he didn't know who I was. You know, I'm not saying I'm super famous, but I'm like, that was my home club. That's why I started. And the manager who had been managing for 10 months didn't know me. So I pointed to my picture on the wall. I'm like, yeah, I've, I've been here. This is, you know, I've worked here before. And then without fail, every single comic that walked in was like, hey, Leanne, how you doing? Hey, Leanne, how you doing? Hey, Leanne, how you doing? And the manager was like, why don't I know you? I said, sir, I can't answer that. I said, I guess I fell out of favor because that happens. I don't know what I did to fall out of favor, but out of favor, I had fallen. And so he's like, oh, why don't you why don't you talk to the booker? And this is not any comment on the person who is booking the club. But bookers don't talk to comics. Either they like you and they book you or you don't or they don't. That's kind of how it goes. And I go where the love is. I don't fight. I probably should fight more. I just don't. 
And so I was feeling ambitious, you know, it's 2020, you know, I'm trying to get in the game. Hey, Maria, I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I said, let me be a little ambitious. You know, I, I, I texted him because that's a little less aggressive. I didn't hear back. Uh, I, yeah, I, I sent an email. I didn't hear back. I called. I didn't hear back. Um, but what I did get in response instead of no spots, instead of monthly spot, I got two spots. This is huge. This is huge. Like, like, okay. And so unfortunately, those spots came during the month of the pandemic. So when you say, Leanne, why did you even entertain going to this show? I'm like, because if I canceled, they would hold it against me. I had to wait for them to cancel. And I know this is weirdness, but comics, if you are watching, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, okay, I'm going to risk death just so they say I didn't cancel. What was that, Gil? You were booked with Janice Bissetti, sold out show tomorrow night in Florida. That got canceled. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about that. Um, hey, Andrea. Oh, my God. Marsha's sister. Girl, I love you. I haven't seen you. haven't popped up in my timeline uh for a little bit now and i'm sorry that means i have to actually go and find you because girl your posts you know you when you put it out there you are so smart and so funny and i'm like does this chick do comedy because i want to hire her you are just so all point like i remember your 50 reasons for loving black panther and i'm paraphrasing badly um, but I remember that. I think I copied and saved that. It was so good. Hey, Sora, Yvette, I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes, we met at um, Fort Dix, New Jersey. I did an, an all women's uh, comedy show for Women's History Month. Hey, Joey Cola. Oh, the wonderful, fantastic, and one and only Joey Cola is watching. Clearly, I need to do Facebook Lives more for people to show up in my life like this. Uh, that is fantastic. And again, if you're just joining, uh, you know for a fact that I don't do this. I don't put myself out there like that. This is my huge moment of bravery. And it's all because my, my show got canceled tonight. And I complained about it. And I did a video. And folks on several platforms uh, said, hey, why don't you do a live stream and we'll PayPal you. And I'm like, oh, is this how it works in the new gig economy? PayPal, Leanne, Lord, don't front like you can't spell it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes. Hey, Queen. Thank you, honey. Thank you so much. Leonard. Oh, my gosh. Fred Cunningham. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. And Michael Worthington. Uh, I am a member of Sigma Gamma Rose Sorority Incorporated. Yes, I am. I feel like I'm old enough to be a founder right now i don't know where all these young sorors are coming from young tons of energy step teaming it like, did i do that i think i did that it just feels like a really long time ago on a step team really far away christy miller hey girl i'm trying to get dirty enough to do your show someday <laughs> some dirty jokes i got one okay i got one i got one oh um, okay wait wait i think i'm no i'm gonna mess it up <laughs> i should be wearing a mask in my own house <sighs> my cat has the mask because he thinks he makes him safer anyway uh i appreciate that thank you for looking out for my safety maria walsh if i'm gonna get sick in my own house uh, I have my own cure. That would be my one drink minimum of fireball, everybody, which might explain why I'm brave enough to even do this. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I don't need liquid courage. Oh, ah, kiss to you, Maria Walsh. Thank you so much. Welcome back from LA. I hope that was a really successful uh, trip for you. And, and Don, thank you for watching. Thank you as well. Again, I'm not talking about anything of major importance. Um, well, then I'm, I could be a president of the United States, though, because I actually watched. I actually watched. What was that? It's not a State of the Union. He's talking to us. I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what he said. I just know. I'm like, oh, you know what? I just wasted 20 minutes of my time. I should have been watching Big Bang Theory. He didn't say nothing. I got more out of Joe Biden today and um bernie who can't win which is ridiculous i cannot believe a dude who's talking about what people actually need is not 
you know, doesn't can't win. It's like, really? Is that really true? Are they just telling us it's not true because they want to keep the status quo? Whatever. Do we really want to go there? Probably not. Um, Michael, you crossed into Capiland in 1984. Ooh, yeah, honey. You you and the founders. <laughs> You and the founders. Were, weren't we just neos the other day? And for anybody that is unfamiliar with that terminology, um, a, a neophyte is a new member of a fraternity or a sorority, and, and particularly the Black Greek uh, uh, fraternity and sorority system. You know, I again, I, I'm not going to tell you when I crossed, just so you know, but that back in the day, it was, when I crossed, it was still considered crossing. I didn't skate. <laughs> That's no, exactly, exactly. I pledged, son. <laughs> and then I became a big sister. And I was like, greet me <laughs> to anybody. You know, not, you didn't need to be in my organization for me to demand a greeting and run your history for me. Because uh, it's all about once you cross, though, once you once you become a member of a black Greek letter organization, um, that's just a gateway to a higher level of sisterhood, a higher level of brotherhood, you know, and what we could do for the community. I'm not doing nothing but telling jokes, but I'm just saying theoretically. Uh, yes, that's my gang symbol, Maria. That is the hand sign. That's what we call it, the hand sign for my sorority, Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. Um, and hello, welcome, Emily. I say, hey, Emily, how are you? Oh my goodness, my, my artist. You do wonderful caricatures, wonderful renderings, and I appreciate what you've done for me um, in the past. Hi, Judy. Hi. Uh, this is all so new for me. I've never considered doing this before. You got, of course you got hazed. Michael Worthing, listen, if you crossed in 1984, I just figured that was synonymous with being hazed. Um, if it's known that, well, I shouldn't assume, but it seemed like men go harder um, in terms of their pledge process back in the day uh, physically. Um, more than women. Um, for me, uh, it was more mental. I was when I when I crossed and I became a dean you know, of pledges and then became bestless in my chapter and then a, an advisor. This was way way back in the day. My true concern was bringing in and making quality members. You know, people that were going to make a difference for the organization and grow as women. You know, because we were what we were in our teens our late teens and 20s we thought we were grown but we weren't we were still building the foundation of the women and men that we would become and i thought that that was important um hey john john regoras hey how you doing i'm sure that you are looking at this live stream and you can tell me everything i'm doing wrong lighting wise i've got a light here and a light rig here and i probably look like I don't know one of the walking dead right now so maybe one day if i ever do this again i don't know i'll i'll get it right but this is really impromptu this is what happens during a pandemic people do crazy shit like this hey peaches another icon in the new york city comedy game um again honey i'm really glad i'm really i'm really sad that i missed your show the other week it was my plan to come out and hang out and support Luz Michelle. Thank you. Um, yours, by the way, uh, Lucy's Comedy Club is one of the only clubs that I've seen that actually uh, posted and directly addressed uh, the pandemic and said that they were canceling shows and why. And I thought that was a really classy way of of stepping up and, and acknowledging what's going on for both audience members and for comics. So please pass that on to them that I thought it was great. Um, uh, it was, I, I liked the way they did that. I, I wish more comedy clubs and maybe they will, you know, who knows? This is, this is new. There's, I don't know what the pandemic etiquette is besides social distancing, hitting up my elbow if I cough. And if I get really sick, not bothering anybody, just dying in my house alone, you know, well, with my cat and he'll have something to eat after a few days. <sighs> Hello, Richard Saunders. Pe Peaches, why are you serious, girl? She said everything I do is right. That is so not true. That is my image. I do a lot of wrong shit. I truly do. Uh, I don't know. Michael Worthington just asked, is there a button to push to make sure he gets notified when I live stream again? Are you serious? Dude, I'm not doing anything. I am I'm literally like this is really one of the first times that I'm doing this. I'm not talking about anything serious. And I, I really just... 
responding to several people that said, hey, you don't have a show to hop on and live stream. You know, well, the other thing is that I was I was bad because I got dressed, put on makeup. I'm looking cute. I'm looking cute for no damn reason. But apparently this was the reason. But I don't know if there's a button. I truly don't. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you're ca- oh, Peaches is calling this the comedy drought. Yeah. I mean, anybody that is in any kind of service industry any, who is working the gig economy, you know, folks don't understand. We don't, there's no human resources department for us. There's no vacation time. There's no sick leave when you work for yourself, which is essentially what you're doing if you're an entertainer. And so, you know, you, we have feast or famine. And if this is hitting you, if this pandemic is hitting you at a famine point, you don't exactly have a lot of financial resources backing you up to help you weather something that you don't know how long it'll be. So people like, oh, you you know, a couple of kids get canceled. What does that mean? <sighs> that means a lot um, for many of us. I mean, just to break it down, you know, they're cruise ship comics. I did cruises for 10 years. I worked for Carnival and then for Holland America. And it's decent money, but it's money that keeps you going in the moment. You know, sure, you put a little money aside, you know, but that's supposed to be for your retirement. I'm not planning on retiring, you know. It's, it's just not reality for me. Um, but you, you do it. You put a little money aside for your retirement. You put money aside for emergencies. And emergencies happen. You know, my boiler, my heater went a few years ago. That was five grand five grand <laughs> like what and they wanted their money up front this wasn't a door deal <laughs> you know so you again this is a it's a wonderful job i love this job i'm not i don't this is what i wanted to do i wanted to do stand up i chose this i didn't plan for the pandemic people and a lot of comics didn't a lot of artists didn't a lot of other um entertainers and freelancers didn't plan for this and so my question is when they're talking about how to handle this what are they doing for people like me what are they doing for people even more vulnerable than me you know because i'm I'm lucky the house is paid for you know but there's still taxes and water and electricity and now cat food oh he's not even here i'm i'm turning to give him stink eye he done walked out i guess my cat is not all about the live streaming um oh michael you found it well dude inbox me and let me know how I could tell people when I'm live streaming again, although I don't know if I'm doing this. Peaches, government assistance. Okay. The same government that uh, tried to cut Medicaid and wanted to get rid of Meals on Wheels. Okay. Just so you know, I'm my mother's Meals on Wheels. That's how that works. But don't get me started. Uh, Alexandria, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, I know, I do know that many people will be seeking government assistance, but they might as well be looking for Godot because I don't think it's going to be there. This country has become very cold and very callous. It doesn't understand that we're only as strong as our weakest link. That's not what we do here now. I'm hoping we can get back to that with the, the, the election, but that's several months away. Hey, Liz, thanks for watching. Um, my neighbor's watching. Okay, why don't you just leave your house, Rosie? Come around the corner, ring the bell. <laughs> I'm so kidding. Don't do that. Well, if you do, you get some fireball if you want, or the good bourbon. You would get the good bourbon, my dear, uh, if you came by. Oh, goodness. Uh, and yeah, Rosie, if you're just tuning in, I'm not doing anything. I'm not talking about anything important. I just, my show was canceled tonight, and I was bummed about it because I'm like, I'm looking cute nobody's gonna see it everybody said hey live stream well not everybody just a few people and i took them up on the challenge and this is interesting um let's see what is this oh i can't read all of that i can't read all of that peaches and i'm sorry maybe i'll see a little bit more of it um later on um thank you rosie for laughing i appreciate that you know you know somebody a long time when you know them by their childhood nickname and nobody else calls them by that (laughs) Yes, Peaches, Rosie is my neighbor. Uh, we are three years apart. We we grew up together. Our moms knew each other. We went to this thing, grammar school, uh, when we were little kids, which is now closed. St. Clement Pope, that's gone. Um, Tim, hello, I see you. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. Tim, absolutely nothing is going on here of interest. I'm just babbling because I didn't have a show tonight. And... Um, 
a couple of people suggested, they said, hey, why don't you live stream? And I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a topic. I just figured I'd, I'd come on and hang out for a little bit. Oh, wow, J.D. Mack, you just jumping into the uh, the fray here with some real questions. Okay. Uh, J.D. asks, what did I think of the most recent season of Doctor Who? I tried. I really tried. Uh, and I have heard great things from people. I've heard that it got good you know after a couple of episodes but I think this season of Doctor Who has taught me that I'm not a Doctor Who fan I am a David Tennant fan which is a very different thing uh, I got turned on to Doctor Who uh, through the blink episodes I didn't I didn't know where to jump in and somebody said watch Doctor Who watch you know the season three of the reboot um, and watch the Blink episode, which completely pulled me in, even though the Doctor, ironically, wasn't the focus of it. But it was a fascinating episode. I loved it and I got hooked. And I think what, and I could be wrong here, but the Doctor that you start with is your Doctor. And David Tennant is mine. And no one's lived up to that. None of them. Not one. Um, since that. Um... Oh, Tim. Wow. Okay. So all shows in DC were canceled, even Congress, because that's the biggest show going. Uh, but I'm assuming you mean comedy shows. Uh, talk about Netflix and Amazon binge watch for the uh, upcoming two months. Yeah, that's going to be a thing. You know, it, it, wherever you f have a fall off on, in the economy, somebody else is benefiting. Some, so there's going to be lots of Amazon orders. FedEx and UPS will be doing well, as well as streaming services. That's just the economy of it. Um, I'm actually hoping that um, CBS All Access has a pandemic sale like a one month free for the pandemic so I can binge watch Picard because I know, I know, I know I'm a, I'm a horrible human being. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. Um, oh, JD. Okay. So Tom Baker is your doctor. I, here's the thing. I've never seen a Tom Baker episode, but I have a Tom Baker scarf. I was at, I was at Dragon Con a couple of years ago and I wanted to buy the coat. Uh, my, my, um, my, uh, my doctor who, uh, David Tennant coat, the coat was $500. The scarf was not, I bought the scarf. <laughs> um, Michael, uh, this live stream isn't about the topics discussed. It's about the person discussing whatever you, I'm just saying, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. I, again, I'm, I'm really, I'm very much belt and suspenders. You know, I have a plan. You know, everything's mapped out. Uh, I, I'm used to having a very precise way of doing things. So this this is badass and freewheeling. This is really outside of my comfort zone in Wheelhouse. But I'm glad that people are here it and appreciating it. And maybe I'll do it again. Maybe I'll do it again. If the pandemic continues, this will be the way that I... Um, engage with fans. Uh, currently watching um, HRC's doc on Hulu. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. I, I tuned in, I watched like 10 minutes, and then I left and I came back. And Hulu does this thing where they don't pick up where you left off. You have to start from the beginning again, which is really frustrating. Uh, so I will come back to it. Uh, I don't I don't have a whole lot of Hillary hate. You know, even if she did everything um, her her detractors say that she did. Uh, I want a president. I would have wanted a president who knows where the bodies are buried. And matter of fact, went stand aside. Let me get this shovel and show you how this burial is done. Okay, we we appreciate that in men, but not in women. Whatever. So I do think she was cheated uh, out of that. Uh, Linnell, hello. Thanks for watching. You, I second Mike. I don't know what that reference is to. Uh, Lynn, hey, how you doing? Thank you for being a fan of my work and you're welcome for live streaming. I cannot tell you how far outside of my comfort zone that I am. Again, I'm a planner. I like everything worked out and I hopped on here with no plan, no guidance, no nothing, just did it. Um, so this will definitely be a Dear Diary moment. Um, I, I had a a colleague once who said that I'm the type of person that would walk into chaos and start filing. True. 
And at the time, I thought it was a compliment. Now I'm not so sure. I think I was insulted. But it's too late. The comment was 20 years ago. What can I say? Um, facts. I don't know what that is, too. Hey, Josh, thanks for, for watching. Um, yeah, so, oh, oh, it was about Hulu. Uh, I th uh, For, uh, yeah, okay, I think Tim is agreeing with you, Mike. Yeah, I, I will say what I'm also enjoying on Hulu, I believe it's Hulu, uh, the New York Times has a show on there called The Weekly, where they do a deep dive uh, into their their news stories. And I, I find that, that, that fascinating as well. Uh, they showed when they did the double endorsement, uh, but they showed their interviews with all the, the candidates at the time and their discussions about what they thought, uh, what had been presented, what was lacking. And I liked having that backstory. So that's definitely uh, a show that I enjoy. Kareen, thanks for joining. Um, I appreciate that. Josh, I see you as well. Kareen, I'll, uh, I guess when I hit that little button, it means I'm leaving at you. I could just do that, but okay. I'm, I'm learning the technology, uh, everybody. And late to the game, because people have been live streaming like forever, right? And I, I'm just, can I tell you how uncomfortable I am with video? Hey, Jeff Brown. Oh, my God. I'm just bringing out all the heavy hitters. Oh, my word. I'm feeling special. Oh, my. This makes up for not having a show tonight. Just hanging out with you guys. I psh, bump having a show and risking COVID-19. This is how it, I'm loving this. I'm loving every minute of this. Um, what was that? Oh, you usually ignore people's live streams. No, this was, yeah, this is a surprise. Not only to you, but to me as well i did not know i was gonna do this uh thank you fireball <laughs> brad dean alexander thanks for watching jeff oh my god i we worked jeff brown everybody just hopped in the live stream he may not still be on i don't know but i'm gonna give this brother a shout out so smart so funny so talented another one of the the heavy hitters and long time players in the comedy game uh i don't i don't know when we got to be old heads sir I got I got chicks out here making me feel like the Harriet Tubman of comedy. <laughs> what? Oh, well, hey Poodle, hey Sora, thank you for so much for watching. You're still here, Jeff. Good. Then I I hope you heard your compliment that I gave you. You know, much love, much respect uh, to you and, and who you are, um, both personally and professionally. You know, to 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 know folks who have it going on on both ends is just you know, a treasure and a joy. Uh, no, Michael, I do not have any shows scheduled in Dallas. Uh, and I haven't been to Texas in quite a long time, which is insane because I actually have family there, family who I haven't unfriended on Facebook. <sighs> long story. Uh, but yeah, I haven't gotten out to Texas. I've been a little um, tri-state northeast region area bounds because I don't, I don't know if you know, um, but the last five years, I uh, one of my other jobs has been, um, uh, how shall I say, uh, home office senior manager. Uh, that's what I call it. I've been, been taking care of my parents. Uh, well, I'm actually down a parent. One parent down, uh, still got one. Uh, and it's, it, it's work. It's, it's definitely work sort of managing um, that transition. Uh, nothing I expected, uh, but that I got my podcast out of it, you know, people with parents, which talks about, you know, the role reversal between adult children and their aging parents. Cause man, it's, it's a trip and nobody prepares you for this. Like I barely got the original birds and bees talk. I definitely didn't get this on how to do that. Um, embrace the old head thing. Really Jeff? For real? How, how do you do it? Cause I, I don't feel like an old head. We are, oh, we are the old people in sci-fi movies. You're hurting me. We have all the wisdom from the seventies and eighties after us monkeys throwing shit. Okay. Yeah, you right. But I don't, I don't feel like an old head, but then somebody asked me a question and I actually have the answer. And part of me is like, how did you not know that? But the rest of that sentence is, how did you not know that, youngin? And that's why they didn't know that. So, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to work on embracing it. It's difficult. It's because I, I, I guess I don't see myself that way. Uh, 
Tim, I'm working on coming down to DC. I actually, I don't know if he's still here on the live stream, but one of my fellow comics was just down there. He's working with Tony Woods, another legend. Uh, he put me in touch with um, someone who's doing shows down there. And I said, I would love to come to DC. I love DC. So, you know, fingers crossed if we all survive or if some of us survive, because not all of us are surviving this. So if some of us survive the pandemic and hopefully me, um, I will be down in the DC area. Um, hey, Bryant, thank you for saying this is brilliant. I'm not doing anything important, but thank you. Rachel, thank you for coming in. Um, oh, you're welcome for, um, oh, that's really sweet. Um, Craig said, thank you for lighting up our night. Um, I don't know if I'm better than Big Bang Theory, Bazinga, but thank you for saying that. Uh, I appreciate it. And Jeff, that is good advice. Hey, Sora Tiff. Hey, Tiffany. Oh my God. Uh, okay, can I just say, okay, we were t Tiff, you weren't here before, but somebody, um, there were a bunch of Sora's on here, and somebody said, I'm Leanne, what's already you? And of course, Sammy Gamera was already incorporated. And, you know, I was talking about what, you know, sorority and fraternity means in the grand scheme and the responsibility that we're called to um, being in black letter Greek organizations and about making people who become good men and women in the community. And my dear, if there is somebody who is a glowing example of that, it's you. Yes, I'm shouting you out, Tiffany. My girl is a principal. She is a leader of young minds. And, you know, I remember when you were 18 years old, my dear. Where does the time go? But you are one of the stories I am most proud of. Uh, let's see, Michael, you moved your mom into your house three years ago. Oh, so you you understand what I'm talking about. You should check out my podcast. It's on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. It's called People with Parents. And I, I tell these these stories, you know, that would come up, you know, trying to care for and, and take care of my parents and figure out what, what was going on. Like, it was all like, what? What is happening? Uh, and I didn't move my parents in anywhere. We've always been together. You know, we have a two family house. I would go out and tour and do my thing and then come back. And you know, that generation, that, that generation pretends they're fine everything's fine until it's not house could be on fire they go oh just let me get this cup of water everything's gonna be fine oh my arm is hanging off i just need some duct tape baby i'll be fine yeah and then you gotta step in what was this yamanika headlined in december and we hung out the whole time oh man that is so awesome i would what club what club were you guys at because that would be, i listen I still have passport, will travel. You know, they could lock it down if they want, but I'm, I, a chick is ready to make a break for it. Um, Marianne, thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Jennifer, I see you too. Thanks for watching, Sheila. Amy T, hey girl, how you doing? Oh my gosh, everybody's coming out tonight. I can't, did I tell you how good you guys are making me feel? This is so wonderful. I, um, my, my comedy show got canceled tonight. It was supposed to get canceled. I wish it got canceled earlier. Uh, but I guess everything happens for a reason. It doesn't. But tonight, there is a reason. So I, I got to hop on this live stream, which I, if you know me, you know I don't do this. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm having the bestest time, you guys. So thank you for, for watching and responding and engaging. The improv, Michael, thank you. Arlington Improv. Okay, I'll get my team on that. I don't have a team, everybody. It's me. <laughs> it's always been me. Uh, but Arlington Improv in Dallas. Listen, if you know, if you have a contact, you know, inbox me and let me know. And I'll reach out um, and see what I can do uh, in terms of, of getting me to come through there. You know, I don't, I don't, you know me, I don't have a problem traveling. Well, maybe now, um, you know, folks flying and getting tested positive and saying later, hey, I was on your flight. I was positive. Would I not punch somebody in the head for that? How you go risk it? How you go put everybody at risk? This is, this is crazy. Um, Celestia, hey, love, I see you. Thank you so much. Sheila, thank you. You said I look amazing. Okay, so because my inner, my inner teenager is like, you look like shit, girl. <laughs> we are always so very hard on ourselves. It's like, oh, I've put on weight. Oh, you know, but this lighting isn't good for me. So I'm going to let all that go. 
um, and just take the compliments. So, so thank you, Michael. Thank you for saying I would kill it there. Yeah, no, I'll send the syllabus before the show so everybody can be up to date with what I'm going to be talking about and be able to engage and respond in the way that I need them to. Uh, I did, JD. I did play uh, Bethesda's maybe a little bit more than a year ago. I was with um, oh, one of my favorite comics, whose name I'm blanking out right now. Um, the AM, the AMP Strathmore. Does that sound familiar? Um, I think that's where I was. Um, I was also dating someone down there at the time. Uh, great guy. No, I, I, and I, I don't mean that in a. He wasn't. I mean he was. Uh, but it was, it's, it was, it's the not a now thing, but that's not why I got the gig. This got way more complicated than I meant it to be. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I would come down to DC in a heartbeat. Yes. The AMP. Thank you. Yes. That's exactly where I was. Sean Cornelius. Hey dude, how are you? I hope your, um, movie screening and your movie is doing well. Um, no, I, no, dropping by to say, hey, I appreciate that. Breeze in, breeze out, do what you got to do. I can't believe I'm still here. I've never done a live stream before. Um, may or may not do it again, but I am enjoying the engagement. I'm enjoying the whole process of it. Had I known it could be the school, I'd have done it before. Uh, Gregory Joseph, what you doing here, sir? Shouldn't you be working somewhere? Oh my goodness. Thank you for honoring me with your presence. I appreciate it. There are so many people who've hopped in and out uh, on this live stream that I, I'm, I'm really thrilled. This, is, uh, this has been an interesting evening. Hey, Chewy, thanks for liking this. What do you like about it? I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I, I, get, I feel like I should be doing something. <laughs> And all I'm doing is talking and hanging out and responding to interesting questions about my sci-fi credibility, uh, I guess, uh, which I actually had happen uh, one night. It's about a month ago at a bar. The guy figured out I was a, a Star Trek fan. Uh, go figure. And he's like, oh, I got to test you. And I'm like, no, you really don't. Um, and he had, he came up, came out with this trivia question. He was like, you know, what, what's the name of the ship on DS9? And I was like, Pfft. The defiant <laughs> like how is that even a real question and he was impressed I'm like you're impressed with the right answer what I mean that's another thing dudes that nerd don't think women nerd and I get I guess from my generation of people they that wasn't a thing but no I'm a nerd sir I'm, I'm a hardcore nerd depending on on the the genre or the area I, I get into comic books or anime or anything like that uh, maybe one day, Sheila Parson, maybe one day they'll figure out how to have you charge for a show this way. I would pay. Uh, my PayPal is Leanne Lord. My Venmo is Leanne Dash Lord. Cash at me. <laughs> you, you are being you and I appreciate it. Thank you, Valencia. I, I appreciate that. Jeff, nerd, exclamation point. That's right, son. I nerd hard. My geek runs deep. I have no shame about it. What what does bother me are all the people running around talking about how they're nerds now when it's safe, when it's easy. I was a nerd before this shit was safe and easy, son. You know, I was a nerd when you got picked on for being a nerd. How about that? You know, so all these people that want to claim being a nerd, you know what? You're welcome. <laughs> What do you nerd out on? When you nerd out, you dig stuff like cars, MMA, music. Of course, yeah, I, I, that, uh, yes, we we all have our things that we nerd on. Um, I meant it in the, my nerd is in the classic uh, sci-fi sense. He, hey, Le Leanne Barrett, I see you, a uh, wonderful, funny musician who works with me on no-name uh, comedy shows, uh, both at QED and Auto Shrunken Head. But yeah, no, it... I, I think life is better when you have that thing, Jeff, that you can nerd out on. And for me, it really did start um, with Star Trek. That was my point of entry, so to speak. And believe it or not, the first Trekkie I ever knew was my mom. <laughs> my mom got me into this. My mom got me my first costume, Lieutenant Uhura, of course. And I went to my first convention, my first Star Trek convention with my mom. Um, I, I actually talk about this on stage. Uh, we got hit on. <laughs> we got hit on by Klingons, not not by men, 
Klingons. You got hit on by female Klingons. Um, next generation female Klingons. So you don't you don't say no to that. So yeah, hashtag me too, son. <laughs> Yeah, but no, I got I come by my nerd honestly and historically. Uh hey Maria, thanks. Hemet. Oh man, dude, how are you? Good to see you here on my live stream. Um You was that you you nerd a bit over here, Jeff, but you don't have time. I know, right? Oh what? You wanna watch all the Star Wars in order. Now we're gonna have to talk about order because um star wars look okay i'm not hating on star wars but i'm also not i'm not happy i don't i don't i'm very confused by the franchise i don't know what is happening i i know the last star wars movie whatever what i was awake for was good you know and i i don't know what we're doing now i'm just i'm just lost this, this last movie they got the force doing things the force ain't ever done you know you have a canon you have a reservoir of knowledge about this about your own movie what are you what are you doing it kind of it kind of felt like the rabbit disappointment that game of thrones season eight was and i you know what i can't even i can't even talk about that without getting all up in my feelings because they just Season 8, Game of Thrones. That was saying, you know this love that we done built? This relationship we done built? This trust we done built? We're going to take all that and throw that in the garbage. How about that? That's what Season 8, Game of Thrones was. And you know what? Unforgiven. You just took my love and threw it away, y'all. And I'm, I'm not that kind of woman. I don't forget and I don't forgive. Just saying. Robert Brown. Hey, man. You're watching hey Sora Brooklyn we girl we watching from the Middle East <laughs> where you at where you at you in Iraq you in Afghanistan you in you <laughs> where you at I love my, my world traveling Sora man I love it I love it yes my mom did take us to the movie and pack sandwiches in her bag I had that hey Robin big hug girl big hug thank you for watching i appreciate it uh courtland thank you michael michael worthington uh what you've never this man just admitted publicly he, he has never seen one star wars movie i don't even i don't i don't i don't even understand those words like what not Function, son. It's like, next thing you gonna tell me, you ain't you ain't seen you ain't even read Harry Potter, a seaboard Harry Potter movie, or you don't know what house you're in. Like serious? I don't. But, hey, Brian, best photographer ever. How you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, that, that should have been a more enthusiastic welcome to the live stream. But I just can't understand somebody that's never seen a Star Wars movie. Like, was it intentional? Are you poor? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's terrible. But is it? How did that happen? Had, was, did did you know the first one and just get swept up in your childhood, or is it sci-fi totally not your thing? Like anime is totally not my thing. I didn't get introduced to it um, in my formative years, and so I just don't kind of have the headspace for it. Kimberly, hey, hello. Thank you for watching my live stream about nothing. Michael, okay, listen. We we gonna about to, we about to have problems. So you never seen Star Wars and you haven't read one Harry Potter book. Really, sir? How about a movie? Have you seen the movie? Don't you have children? Like what have you not even seen the movie? Never saw the movies. Okay, now I'm gonna have to start to ask what you're doing with your life. That you have not seen Harry Potter. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, I've read the books, I've seen the movies. Hey Everett, nice to see you. Um, thank you, Gail. Even your six-year-old grandson has seen Star Wars. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I I am so hardcore Harry Potter. I'll tell you my house. My house is Ravenclaw, right? It, and and that's actually an issue that comes up for me with dating. Don't tell me you like Harry Potter. You don't know what house you're in, son. So no, I'm not. Don't even fake fun, the funk with me like that. But at least you're honest. Never saw Michael. You have never seen Game of Thrones. Or the Sopranos. Okay, I will match you on the Sopranos. I've seen 
referencing scenes. Like when they say, oh, this is the greatest scene in The Sopranos, and they'll say, I've seen that. I've never seen the show. It did not appeal to me. But you are missing a whole lot here on the social competency media spectrum. Like, what are you watching? What is happening? What are you doing with your life? Uh, Michael needs to watch Star Wars in total order. I don't know. I don't know if I would wish that on anybody because it gets progressively disappointing. Ugh. Oh, my God. Hey, John. Nice to see you. Thanks for watching. Uh, no Star Wars. He must be related to Biden. <laughs> Oh man, do are we gonna go? Are we gonna talk politics today? I really don't want to. It's so depressing. I I I Chandra. Oh my God, my special is on here. Special. So many swords are on here, it, or they were. I don't know if they still are. Maybe they discovered they had something better to do with their lives. They watch me do this. This is crazy. Yes, special. I'm waving at you. Um, special, everybody. That's my nickname for my friend Chandra, my friend and sorority sister. Special means uh, special. Because when she was pledging, I was her special big sister, and she was my special little sister, and the name just stuck. Uh, Michael, you are killing me, dude. There's so many shows you haven't seen. You haven't seen Breaking Bad? <sighs> what are you, what are you doing? Are you reading? <laughs> what is happening? Oh my gosh, I, I cannot tell you. How incredibly special this feels to have so many people that I know, love, adore, and respect pop in on my first ever real live stream. And right now I'm saying hello and waving to my girl, Kara Foster, who <sighs> so bad ass. I, I met her as a stand-up comic and a writer, but you have grown into so much more. I'm so impressed uh, by what you're doing and that I can say I know you. This is wonderful. Uh, yes, Jeff, I agree. Michael sounds Amish. <laughs> Like a total Luddite. Like, how is he even on this live stream thing? Are you familiar with the Facebook? The Book of Face? <laughs> Baby Yoda forever. Okay, can I just tell you, I have not seen Mandalorian. And not because I don't want to. I just refuse to pay for another streaming service. And I had, I had actually really hoped that dating would work out for me. And I would meet a friend with a password but that hasn't happened and so I'm not shelling out another damn dime for another service I'm just not doing it Joanna Beckson oh my goodness acting teacher extraordinaire to comedians hey Joanna thank you so much for tuning in I'm not talking about nothing hun I just my show got canceled tonight my comedy show at the strip so grateful uh, that I'm not actually out in public uh, infecting or getting infected by anybody. And so um, someone suggested that I do a live stream instead. And here I am doing something I am completely uncomfortable doing. This is way outside my zone of comfort. I, I, I don't like things that are spontaneous and impromptu and not controllable and yet here I am having a really good time with some really uh, wonderful people yes Kareth I've missed our tea times as well um wow I, I had even forgotten about that wow we've known each other a really long time uh hey Frank welcome uh uh you haven't seen all the shows and movies uh but you have seen Leanne Lord and that makes up for everything yes it does Although I don't know if I have the social cachet of, say, Harry Potter or Star Wars. Um, yes, Joanna Bexon is amazing. Uh, and you, it, jo uh, Joanna, I don't know if you saw this, Kareth just said that she quotes you still, and in a way, so do I. Uh, something that I learned in your class that you had shared from someone, I'm not, I'm not sure who it was, but everything is about love or the lack of love. Always. Every time. And that's not just acting, that's life. Because you could see how much lack of love we have right now and, and what it means. We would not be having this pandemic or we would be surviving it much better if we were coming at it with love. Just saying. Uh, Jack Hoffman, Brad Upson, uh, oh my guess the, the most successful comic on Dry Bar who makes all of us want to do it and then go, hmm, I'm not as successful as Brad. <laughs> 
very successful very funny dude i'm happy for you um hey jack hoffman thank you for tuning in uh, you heard incredible things about her uh, peaches which her do you mean uh there are a lot of incredible hers uh that have been on this live stream uh i i can't believe how much fun this was i thought my night was just gonna be me and my cat watching uh reruns of star trek ds9 although i can't even say reruns i cannot believe how many episodes i missed of that show but i think at that time i must have been um touring and doing colleges and cruise ships and i missed quite a deal so yeah i was working um what's that like uh not so much now uh Kareth Foster, yes, go for the love. Go for the love. Quote Joanna Vexen. It is true. It's 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 almost it's right up there with yes and. You know, when you go for the love, it changes things every single time. And I can't say that I always remember that because I'm a glass half empty girl. So it really is effort for me to go for the love, so to speak, and and, and refill my glass. But you're right, you're totally right. Hello, Raheem. Oh my gosh. This is just, this live stream is just a who's who of who's amazing. Oh my goodness. Melvin George? Oh my word. Just royalty. Comedy royalty is showing up on my live stream tonight. I, I don't know if this would happen if I did it more regularly. Maybe it's because I've never live streamed uh, that you guys are showing up going, what the hell? is Leanne doing? Leanne don't know. Leanne don't know what she's doing. Leanne just here um, because it's the pandemic and all the rules are out the window and I don't have a show tonight so I'm going to show up and show out here. Uh, That's what's going on here. But hey, Melvin George, thank you for showing up. Yes, it, 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 Jack Hoffman, you are absolutely correct. It is a who's who of comedy watching. Uh, I just feel like what <laughs> so many people uh that i love and respect both professionally and personally i have a lot of friends uh who have showed up here on my live stream talking about nothing i don't know i feel like the urban jerry seinfeld i'm not talking about nothing of consequence or substance uh, unless somebody asks me a question I'm just hanging out. I have answered some some sci-fi questions. Went to binge next questions. Although I don't think that's legit for me because I'm I'm Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I mean, come on, how old is that show? And that's what I'm binging. Um, hey, Anne, nice to see you. Thank you so much. A weekly live stream, Michael Worthington suggested. I think that's I think that's manageable. I can try that. Uh, Ron, hello, nice to see you. Brad, your gigs are disappearing as fast as I can answer the phone. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I uh, I have talked to a friend of mine earlier today, Ian Harris, I don't know if he's on the live stream, and he, like, we, we were talking about some future projects, and he said, what are you doing? I'm like, deleting gigs? <laughs> I'm literally, I was literally on my calendar deleting shows that were canceling, and, or that I know will be canceled, but people don't have the stones to do it. Um, I really hope this is short-lived. Um, oh, Pete just said, talk about anything. Stranger Things, Jack Hoffman. Uh, hey, Sora, Lisa. A lot of Soras on the live stream tonight. Um, thank you for, for being one of them. Um, Stranger Things. Okay, here's the strange thing about Stranger Things. I have only seen half of the first season. There was an episode... I can't even tell you what it was. It just hit me a certain way that got me in my feelings too much. And I went, nope. <laughs> I just, I, I dropped out. I couldn't do it. Um, and so I haven't been back. Although I've, I've heard good things. Um, I'll, I'll be back. That's what's wonderful about live, um, not live streaming, but about, you know, streaming services. If you still have them, those shows are always there. Um, What's the thing? Uh, I'll be the first to brag. I lost one today, too. You lost one today, too. What? What's going on? Um, Brad, I'm going to be home at home tonight with my cat. Yo, I'm here tonight with my cat. I think he's a little annoyed because he likes his alone time. Cause I, I would have bet money that he would have been in here. But every time I turned, there is a complete total lack of cat right here and but normally that's my boy you know and I'm an for those of you who don't know and I'm sure you do I'm a new cat mom I just got him in September 
and he is the furry little light of my life. We are really, he's been wonderful um, and so compatible with me. You know, I wake up in the morning, he's the first little face I see. I, I, I'm kind of getting worried. I don't, I don't actually know how I'm going to bring a man up in here. Because <laughs> my dude has his spot. He has his pillow. I wake up and he's like, he's right behind my head. Like, hey, boo, how you doing? I'm like, hey, boo, how you doing? Uh, so I don't know how we bring a third, hey, boo. How you doing in here? But I'll figure it out. Coleman Green. Oh, my goodness. Hey, love. How you doing? Good to see you, Russell. Thank you for watching. Jane, I see you. Lois, are you still hanging out in here? I didn't scare you away with my fears of whether or not I'm doing this show on Monday. Totally nervous. Oh, my goodness. Hey. I, I'm so thrilled. So many people that... Um, I only get to see or exchange uh, sort of messages with or likes on my posts who are actually showing up for my live stream and I feel bad. I don't have any content. I'm not doing anything. I'm just hanging out because I didn't have a show tonight. Uh, but many of you have assured me that hanging out is enough. I dig that. Thank you because I'm, I'm really having a good time as well. You know, at some point though, I'm going to go drink this fireball. Because this is at the same level I started the live stream with. Which is unacceptable. Uh, hey, Danny McDermott. Nice to see you. Thanks for watching. Um, so, yeah, I didn't come on here with any kind of plans. So far, so good. Thank you, Jane. Uh, George! Hey, cutie pie. Thanks for watching. Just so you know, honey, I'm not talking about anything important. I'm just doing my first ever live stream. Because, uh, you know, pandemic... COVID-19. <sighs> you know, this virus is good for anything. It is showing the glaring cracks in our social system, our social and financial system, you know, in, in a country that purports to be the greatest country in the world. We should not have cracks this huge that people can fall through. And I'm not going to say I blame capitalism. Because um, here's the thing. I'm, don't tell anybody. I'm from the 80s. I'm all about greed. I love greed. Okay. I was, my formative years was, was, you know, those who dies with the most toys wins. Okay. That's to me, the green, we talk about green, green new deal. Green, my generation was money. Okay. Recycling, eh, whatever. So I'm all about greed, but manageable greed. You can't have a sustainable system if you take the whole pie. You got to let other people get some. You got to make sure that the, your weakest links are still taken care of. Because I don't know, anybody remember the French Revolution? Do I really need to whip out my crochet needles and start putting people's names in a blanket? And have the guillotine swinging before people realize you can't run a system with this much economic disparity, with such a such a vast uh, uh, chasm between the haves and the have-nots. That's not sustainable. That's when people have pitchforks and start running through the streets. Just saying. I mean, we kind of had that in a mini way when we had uh, Occupy Wall Street. But you know, when people start getting really hurt, it could get a lot worse. And we could be doing so much better I don't want to hear how we gonna pay for Medicaid for all when it, Medicare for all when ain't nobody asked how we paying for drones and bombs not one question ever you know what the same way we finance that let's finance health care I'm not running for anything <laughs> I'm really not this is just you know be be being crazy what is that suggestion let's do shows on Facebook and charge by subscription yes and until we do that my PayPal is Leanne Lord, <laughs> my Venmo, is Leanne Dash Lord. I'm just saying, you know, and George is right. Um, Melvin George is right. Um, this might be the beginning of how we refigure out how to uh, earn from our art. I, I, again, I don't know what that looks like. Literally, I said the other day, I'm like, wow, if this continues. I guess I'll just write another book. <laughs> yeah, because it's that easy. I mean, I. I do have stuff to talk about and put together, but that's effort and that's not going to happen tomorrow. How do we continue to monetize that thing that we've been doing 
um, and that we're really good at in person and make it here. I don't know, Melvin, you're right. Maybe, you know, we have to find a better way of doing that um, or a new way of doing that. And this could be just the beginning. Um, hey, Joanne, my, my happy black woman sister. Good to see you. Um, what is that, Brad? After this virus, at the virus financial collapse take place, the rich are still going to be rich. Yes. Yes, they are. One of my favorite um, tweets that I saw uh, about a month ago, and I try to repost it periodically, um, and I don't remember the gentleman's name. It is in the tweet when I, when I repost it. He said that if you want to figure out where you are in the class war, um, think about it this way. Uh, you are almost always three months away from being homeless. You are never three months away from being a millionaire. Now, if that doesn't make it clear, if that doesn't hurt your feelings, uh, something's wrong. You know, and I, I will tell you, it, it, when I read that, it hurt my feelings. Like, oh, wow, that I've bought into, just like everybody else here, the American dream. Like, oh, yeah, my retirement plan was to be rich and famous. Yeah. Right now, my retirement plan is to Teddy Pendergrass it and, you know, fall through the stage and hope I don't get crippled, just get killed, just die, just completely die on stage. That's my plan right now. Um, Jane Pack, this generation feels they should have the green without earning it. So damn entitled. Okay, I'm going to challenge you on that just a little bit. Doesn't every new generation that enters the workforce feel that way? Because they're entering the workforce at that really special age where they think they know everything. I think it's somewhere between, I want to say, and, you know, we could, we could refigure this, somewhere between 16 and 25. You know it all. Your parents are stupid. Most adults are stupid. You've got this entire thing figured out. If they just let you run everything, you could do it right. right? Isn't, that, isn't that that window where they feel feel like yeah I can be CEO I, now I just need an app so I, 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 I that thing that we get on millennials for or globals now or Gen Z whoever whatever we're calling them is just a natural part of their maturation because they'll learn you know this side of adulthood is a whole lot different than my young adulthood a lot more real uh, where I miss when I had all the answers. Now I'm looking for somebody to tell me what to do and how to do it. I'm tired. I'm tired, you know. So maybe entitlement is just that function of youth. Hey, Joanne from the UK. A rental, my Oh, from back in the day. Um, hey, Brad, thanks. I'm glad. I'm, I know you got to go. I'm, I'm surprised you even stayed on this long. I'm not talking about nothing, but thanks for stopping by. Hey, Joey Novick, a uh, gentleman who always has my best interests at heart and books me on really good gigs when he has them. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm not talking about anything, Joey. I had a gig canceled tonight, so I'm hanging out here uh, on the recommendation of uh, a few fans. Uh, so, Jane, yes and no. Older people worked hard from day one. Did they? I think that's generational. Hey, George Solano. How you doing, love? Good to see you, Jacqueline Carr. Good to see you, too. Um, I'm torn. I'm really torn on that. Um, I'm really torn on that, uh, Jean, because my parents, I would say for my parents' generation, and my parents aren't boomers. They Whatever came before boomers, because my parents had an elite, uh, they worked hard. And I think I'm Gen X. Don't tell anybody. Uh, I, I'm Gen X. And so my generation, we were called slackers, which I hated because I'm like, I'm not slacking. I was a hardworking kid. You know, I was in school. I was doing what I had to do. And my friends were hard workers. So I really resented that label. Um, nobody talks about that. Nobody remembers that. Nobody remembers Gen X at all. You know, but we were told we didn't work hard. And maybe that's why I'm a little biased. Uh, because I was working hard when people said I wasn't. Or that my generation wasn't working hard when I knew we were. Some of us. Maybe not the Valley Girls, but got me with a spoon. But most of us. Most of us were working really hard. Um, and so I think sometimes older folks always kind of look at younger folks. 
uh, with that side eye, you know, even though I'll be on the other side of it. I'm listen, I'm the first to jet for to millennial bash. <laughs> It's just so much fun. Um, uh, by the way, your hair is very pretty. Thank you. So I was going out tonight. I put on the makeup. I put on the cute outfit. I, you know, did the hair. I was like, I'm going to be on stage. And no. So thank you. Because I never know what my hair is doing when I'm not looking at it. So thank you. Um, Jane, you're a lot older. Uh, so let's say um, you are more seasoned more experienced. I like those words. I guess because I'm trying to deny uh, my age right now. Hey, Ellie. Oh my gosh. Ellie. Girl, your cards have kept me going. You know what? I'm in my office and I can show you this right now. Right here is one of the cards that you have been kind enough to periodically send me over the this rough ass year. 18 months, two years I've been having, and I have saved everyone. And they would come at random times. I was never expecting it, and they mean a lot. And because you did that for me, I try to do that for other people. And maybe that's what love and kindness and compassion is. You, you give a little to somebody, and then they pass that on. So thank you for that. Um, Joanne, yes, my parents worked hard too. I think they are supposed to uh, class the class the silent generation. Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. Before boomers, yeah. My my parent, my, again, my parents are first generation. Um, my grandparents were immigrants on both sides, and so that was the expectation. You work hard, you work hard, you work hard. You get a job, you get a second job, you get a third job, and then you get a side hustle. Before it was called side hustle, so that. That's just what my parents did. And they wanted better for me, which meant, yeah, work hard, but not be crazy. Um, I don't I don't know what the medium is. And then my generation had kids and they wanted it to be even easier for them. And unfortunately, it is. <laughs> right? Um Melvin George, good words, good words. Thank you. And Nika B, honey, thank you for being here. Uh, th oh, Astra, that's very kind. Uh, she said, I'm a blessing uh, for others with my gift of humor. I I think if I have any sort of overriding goal for my career or theme or guiding um, prominence, it's um, to enlighten and entertain. And that's been from day one, you know, once I kind of got my feet you know, got my balance and figured out who I am and what I want to do uh, and how I want to do it. And uh, look, I'll be honest, do I want to be more successful? Uh, and defining that as being more famous, more uh, having way more money, way, way more money. I'm talking more than Costco money, like money, <laughs> you know, to just be to be comfortable, to have, you know, true wherewithal. Yes, I would absolutely love that. Uh, am I willing to sell out? Yes, at this point, absolutely. I am totally willing to sell out. I'll put on the clown shoes and the clown nose, whatever you need me to be, I'm gonna do it because you know, time is running out, tick, tick, tick. Uh, Joey, where did I get the Star Trek jewelry? It was a gift, it was a present. Someone gave this to me uh, who knows my level of fandom and I, you know, I wear it almost all the time. I wear it definitely when I go to Dragon Con and I've had dealers you know, people in the mart, you know, salesmen, you know, vendors say, oh, my God, where did you get that? Like, they don't they can't get this. So I don't know where my friend got it. Um, but it's one of the most uh, precious pieces that I have. And I would say bury me with it. But I don't want to be buried. I want to I want to burn. Uh, that's if I'm not bitten by a vampire and live forever because I'm still I'm still holding out for that option. Hurry up if you're going to bite me because I'm tired. Um, Kara, OK, honey, thank you for. Um, no, thank you for the love. And it was great to see you um, on here. I, I really appreciate that. And if I made you laugh, um, I'm glad, you know, with me, at me at this point, I don't care. I think we need it all right now uh, for the pandemic. But, but go, go wheel and deal, sis. Go do your thing. Um, Michael, you raised your kids with the same values your parents raised you. So your sons are successful. Um, that's great. There's, there's no guarantee 
Uh, and I don't have kids, so I'm speaking with the absolutism of someone who doesn't have kids. But there's no guarantee that what you, the seeds you plant will grow. Sometimes they don't. So, you know, the fact that yours did, I think, is commendable and fantastic. And I hope that keeps going, you know, when you, when you have your grandkids. You know, uh, when, when, when the right time is there. Um... I do not, Joey, I do not have CBS All Access because I don't know why. I don't know why I play these games with myself. I'm, I'm waiting for the sale. I, I mentioned it earlier. I want that CBS All Access pandemic sale so I could get my month free and I can binge. It, I know, I know we're only talking $10, you know, for the month or, or you know, five ninety nine if you do commercials. And I don't know why. Every single time I do this to myself, like that's how I watch Discovery. I waited and waited and waited and then I did the sale and I binged it. And I've watched seasons one and two of Discovery um, twice because some of that science was and I wanted to get it. So I loved the show and I really want I do really want to see Picard, um, but I don't I don't have CBS All Access yet. Um, I know. I know. I'm just I'm being awful about it, but I really am enjoying watching Star Trek DS9, Deep Space Nine, on um, Netflix. Uh, I am shocked as to how many um, episodes I've never seen. And I am delighted with, um, I guess I'd forgotten a little bit, how wonderfully beautiful and tender uh, and instructive the relationship was between Commander and then Captain Sisko and his son Jake. It's like, that is, that to me, the epitome of, of father and sonhood. Like, you know, like that's, that's the parenting class. Like, click, watch that. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. I love watching it. Um, Joanne, thank you. And yeah, this, I don't know if this is me in action. My iPhone just let me know that I have low battery. But that's, the, the, you should just be able to turn on your iPhone and that's what it says because I have an iPhone 7 Plus and I unplug it and watch the battery drop as a Zen meditation exercise. Come on, do better. Uh, everybody keeps telling me to upgrade to the 11, but that's a grand. By the time you add, add and by the time I add in everything I need, like I'm going to need the max memory. You know, I'm going to need the iPhone 11 Max Pro Turbo, whatever it is. Uh, and I know it's deductible, but it's the pandemic. Do I really need it? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Oh, you saw season one of Discovery, Joey. Did you like it? it hey, Roberta, Roberta. Thank you for watching. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight on my live stream. This is my, I guess, my Black Seinfeld. I'm talking about nothing. You know, but uh, hopefully doing it with a plum. <laughs> is that the right way to pronounce that uh i don't even know um the i think the italians call it sprezzatura you where you're doing something difficult and making it look effortless the effort for me is getting past my resistance to this uh, and stepping outside my comfort zone uh let's see you did like the relationship especially after the male center patriarchy of kirk and picard what patriarchy picard but that was sexy patriarchy. Patriarchy is always much more palatable when it's sexy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jacqueline, no, it, I, I'm glad that you feel entertained by this. Once again, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, I've been here for an hour. What? I'm just going to hop on for a few minutes. Y'all, listen, I got to go because I get, my cat needs me. <laughs> I don't know what Jane thank you exactly I don't know where my sir is he's probably in the living room chilling in our chair because I haven't completely given up the idea that I have any ownership of this chair uh he's probably chilling I thought he would have wandered in here because he hates when I'm on the phone he'll actually hop in my lap like who are you talking to woman um but I guess it's too late for him Brian thank you um for saying I should do this more often Michael said I should do it once a week you know maybe maybe I will and have more of an agenda and include my cat uh yeah Joanne sir he's not here he's chilling in the living room probably wondering why CNN isn't on because he does watch it he does enjoy CNN um yes in yeah there was a lot of patriarchy in Star Trek we could talk about that next time 
Uh, but bye, Joey. Bye, everybody. Hey, Mindy, if you're just coming in, I'm about to, to hop off. Drew Melvin George, thank you. Uh, once a week, I think, do you think that's manageable? Joanne, I will include my cat. I will probably have to talk to his agent and see what kind of deal we can negotiate because my cat is better represented and more business savvy than I am. I do not have an agent and or manager. Uh, hey, Christina, I'm about to uh, how, thank you for joining, but I'm about to hop off. Um, again, everybody, I, I hopped on this live stream because uh, several people suggested it when I complained that my show got canceled and I got all dolled up for no reason. And so I did something I almost never do. I just followed through with something spontaneous. I'm not the most spontaneous of people. I like plans. I like organization. I, I like knowing things in advance. Uh, but this has been so fun, you know, particularly for the the who's who of of comedy stars and friends who have hopped on here to just say wave and say hello, you know, even if they dipped out quickly. And for the friends and fans who I, I only get to interact with uh, occasionally in person and mostly on posts, you know, when you guys like and share it, I really do appreciate that. And this has been an unexpected evening and I'm glad we got a chance to to share it together thank you for coming through and sharing it with me and um, maybe we will do it again um, I'm not sure how frequent once a week was the recommendation and um, we'll see but thank you so much uh, for sharing your night with me your time with me your comments with me and uh, you're seen and heard and appreciated. And everybody stay safe. Okay? And uh, much love, much laughter. And I'll see you again soon.